when people talk about autism, they talk about it as a spectrum. And what they really mean is that there's a wide spectrum of symptoms and development that uh, can occur in individuals with autism. There's actually a second spectrum as well, which is really their cognitive ability, but people don't generally talk about that, or they talk about it only in the context of the other spectrum. But when you think about a wide spectrum of symptoms, there are really three diagnoses that we use to parse out that spectrum. Starting at the lowest functioning level, we use a diagnosis called autistic disorder currently. Um, and those are individuals that have more severe symptoms. And some of those individuals are higher cognitive level, but many of them are a lower cognitive level. There's a middle category called PDD-NOS for pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. And that's really a catch-all category for individuals that don't quite meet criteria for autistic disorder, um, but do have a language delay. And so they do have a sort of an obvious delay in their development um, early in their life. Uh, those individuals tend to have um, a wide range of symptoms, so they can actually end up being having quite lower symptom levels and being very high-functioning high cognitively, or some of those individuals can actually be um, lower functioning cognitively and have significant symptoms. So that's a very wide spectrum category. On the other end of the spectrum is Asperger's disorder. And Asperger's disorder is very, is unique in some ways. Many individuals uh, with Asperger's disorder actually have precocious language early in their lives. So they begin using words even before we would expect people who are typically developing to use language. And they'll use big words too, adult-like language. So, and that's one reason why when young kids with, uh, who, ha who are, go on to be diagnosed with Asperger's, when they're younger, it's hard for people to tell sometimes because adults love talking to kids with Asperger's disorder because they say such interesting things, almost adult-like things, but in this tiny little body of a child. And so it's fascinating for the adults to talk with them. And kids with Asperger's like to talk to adults as well. Where they really struggle, though, is with peers, and that's oftentimes how people with Asperger's are identified. Because peers are not like talking to adults. Peers are much more uh, attuned to unusual parts of behavioral. So, for example, if you're not appropriately attending to them in terms of your eye contact, a peer is going to notice, an adult's going to slough it off and say that they're a kid. And so and individuals with Asperger's disorder end up being very high functioning. They can be brilliant. So sometimes they have IQs that are extremely high. Um, they, they oftentimes will have pockets of knowledge or ability that is quite exceptional. Um, that also makes it hard for parents to notice because they just think that they have an exceptional child. And there are some exceptional people that have um, weaker social abilities, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have Asperger's disorder. Asperger's disorder is very specifically a clear social communication impairment where you have trouble with social awareness, you have trouble perceiving other people's intentions and motivations. Um, you're not quite sure why other people are acting a certain way, and you have difficulty acting on that. So you don't know exactly how to behave in a complex social environment. And people with Asperger's, when they're younger especially, have trouble interpreting non-literal language, and we all use non-literal language all the time. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, be sarcastic, for example, or we'll use phrases like, don't sweat the small stuff. And people with Asperger's disorder, in fact, one of my patients with Asperger's disorder, when you say don't sweat the small stuff, their interpretation is that you shouldn't use the big exercise equipment because it'll make you sweat more. So they, they tend to be quite concrete in their interpretation of that non-literal language. But people with Asperger's disorder can be quite talented and have abilities, and that's what makes that part of the spectrum really the hardest to diagnose earlier in life.